truth must be told, most of us desire to own a super yacht in our lifetime. But wait until you make several million dollars and you're ready to order your first dream yacht. Then, another lingering question strikes. Where do I start? Brace yourself for impact because we're about to discover how to purchase your dream super yacht. Make sure you watch the whole video as we have saved the most critical step for the end of the video. Welcome back to Yacht News, where you may enjoy the most spectacular and up-to-date yacht news. Before we begin, like and subscribe so that we can welcome you aboard. Do give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it, turn on the bell icon to receive notifications about upcoming videos. Today, we are going to discover how to buy your first dream super yacht. Let's start with the first step on our list. Step number one, look for a super yacht that suits you. Searching for an appropriate super yacht is a critical step for acquiring your dream yacht. So, you can do this by choosing yourself or seek assistance from a yacht broker. Some of the factors to consider include usage. Will the yacht be a commercial or a private vessel? You should also keep in mind that the law is stricter on commercial yachts than on their private yacht counterparts. Other aspects include size of the yacht, its speed, maximum number of guests, and crew. Type With type, we refer to a motor yacht or a sailboat. Here you'll need to figure out how you want the vessel to serve you. Do you want 100% relaxation or do you want to participate in the navigation? A motor yacht may be a good fit for you if you plan to relax and enjoy cruising and sea explorations. On the other hand, a sailing yacht can serve you better if you want to participate actively in your cruise. Many yachting experts agree that motor yachts are more comfortable to cruise in and appreciate the holidays, whereas sailing yachts involve active participation while enjoying the journey. Displacement, Semi-Planning and Planning Holes as a yacht enthusiast, you should come across terms like displacement hull, semi-planning hull, and planning hull. Now, let's explain these terminologies without going too deep into the physics. A yacht with a displacement hull design is the slowest, most stable, and can carry more weight than the other two. It displaces its water when it's cruising through the water. This hull should be preferred hull for your yacht if you're planning to make long-distance trips, cruise through the rough waters, and plan to take a lot of weight with you during your adventures. The biggest downside of this hull is that it's pretty slow. The reason for that is that it needs to move a lot of water when getting up to speed. The second type, the semi-planning hull design, is faster than the displacement type but slower than the planning hull. It's called a semi-displacement hull because it moves water to the sides at slower speeds but starts to semi-plane at higher speeds. It's a relatively stable yacht and can carry a considerable amount of weight. You should go for this type of hull in case you're looking for considerable speed, want to be able to cross oceans and seaworthiness in somewhat rough waters. And the third type, the planning hull, is the least stable but the fastest of all. They're made in such a way that their bow will raise them from the water after a certain speed is reached. You will also recognize them by seeing them ride on the water instead of pushing the water to the sides like other types of hulls do. However, it is sensitive to weight and might be uncomfortable for passengers. With such information, you can choose the yacht with the qualities that you want. Size Restrictions Will you require access to a location that has a beam, draft, length, or height constraint? Is the dock near your home equipped with the needed feet of available water or a fixed bridge that restricts access to yachts with an airdraft of less than your vessel height? Guest Carriage Requirements What exactly is a guest? A guest on a yacht should be ideally either a charter guest, a fee-paying individual or their guest, or a private guest, the owner, a family member, or a friend. Charter yachts, or commercial vessels, and private yachts are treated very differently under international conventions. Number of Guests Small yachts can carry as little as 5 guests with the same or slightly higher number of crew members. But for super yachts and mega yachts, the number of guests accommodated could be 20 or more, with a much larger number of crew members. Maintenance Issues and Availability of Spare Parts Salt water corrodes the yacht's equipment and hulls. It can corrode our yacht's gel coat, rubber fittings, screws, and metal fixtures. In addition, salt accelerates the wear and tear on almost all surfaces, but the additional rust it causes and the damage to the engine are bothersome. So, a few quick servicing options after each drive can be a good habit. As part of your routine maintenance, it's critical to protect every surface from corrosive salt damage. After each run, perform a quick visual inspection of the engine compartment for leaks. To remove any salt residue, hose down the boat. Furthermore, some parts need to be lubricated or tightened. Some other equipment needs to be replaced once in a while. But most importantly is to ensure that you can readily get the spare parts and the technical assistance without much hassle. 
Now, moving on to step two, make a formal offer or purchase. After selecting an appropriate super yacht, you should make a formal offer of purchase. If you contracted a broker, they will present the offer on your behalf and as an industry standard contract to purchase the yacht. This initial sales contract specifies the date for the sea trial, survey, acceptance and sale closing. When you make the offer, it's a requirement that you place 10% of the purchase price in escrow with your marine lawyer or broker. Your offer must include an accurate yacht inventory such as photos, nameplates and more. Step number three, negotiation. At this stage, you're expected to have done your research and established the price of the vessel you plan to purchase. As such, you should have a set budget for the purchase. Similarly, you can let your yacht broker negotiate for you. The seller will likely counter your offer if it's below their expectation. A counter offer means that the seller is ready and willing to negotiate. Step number four, acceptance or rejection of your offer. After the negotiation, the seller will either accept or reject your purchase offer. Because it's uncommon for the first offer to be accepted, it usually takes a week or two to receive an accepted offer. Step number five, testing. This step, also referred to as the survey, involves testing all mechanical, electrical, and electronic equipment. Depending on the size of the yacht, testing can go anywhere from 1 to 14 days to complete. The goal of testing is to obtain an accurate understanding of the current vessel condition and how much the yacht will cost to maintain in the coming years. It is strongly advised that the vessel will be hauled out of the water for inspection as part of the survey. The buyer bears the cost of the survey. Step number six, sea trials. The prospective buyer can take the yacht out on the sea at a convenient time before, during, or after the mechanical testing to assess the vessel's performance while underway. This sea trial, which is usually limited to four hours, is usually paid for by the seller. The engines are tried during the sea experiment to verify cruising and maximum speed. This is a good opportunity for the buyer to verify the vessel's motion and noise levels throughout the interior while underway. Number seven, acceptance. At this stage, the buyer submits a written acceptance of the vessel following a successful survey and sea trial. The buyer's 10% deposit is now at risk if the sale is not completed by the agreed-upon closing date. It's very common for deficiencies discovered during the survey to be included in a conditional acceptance that allows the seller time to make repairs or allows a buyer a financial allowance to make repairs after the closing. For instance, if a flaw in the air conditioning system is discovered that cannot be repaired prior to closing, both the buyer and the seller sign a conditional acceptance, deducting $20,000 from the previously agreed upon sale price to account for the non-functional air conditioning. And finally, at step number 8, closing the sale. A sale closing like in any other business is a fairly forthright exchange of signatures on important documents. The delivery and acceptance protocol specifies the location and the time of the ownership transfer. The buyer should obtain new registration documents and insurance at the time of closing the sale. And that is it for today's video. What's your opinion on the steps to buy your first dream super yacht? Let us know down in the comments section below. Also, let us know when you're going to be buying your first super yacht. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Give us a big thumbs up if you have and join our channel by subscribing so that we can welcome you aboard for more exciting content. On your screen, select one of these videos and we're looking forward to seeing you in the next one.